Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason Bent and welcome to another 5-Minute Friday. And today's topic is talking about metric versus imperial. I use metric in my shop now primarily and for some reason I think I created some sort of cult following over on Instagram uh, and even here on YouTube I always get comments of people that are like, oh it's so great to see an American using metric. Which I think is funny but it's one of the most common questions that I always get people curious as to why I switch. So let's go ahead and put five minutes on the clock and I'll go ahead and get into it. So to start this off, I wanna say that it would be silly of me to make the comment that metric is so much better than imperial for everybody. I think that that's ludicrous and I don't agree with that. What I can tell you is that the reason that I switched is because I am not good at math. And Yes, even though metric is still numbers, it's whole numbers that are much easier for me to deal with. As soon as I start getting into eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, sixty fourths, so on and so forth, that's where I start having a problem. Now, for just a single measurement, it's really not that big of a deal. But once you start getting into where you have to do multiple things, and one measurement turns into a different fraction when you're doing multiple items, that's where everything just falls apart for me. So one day I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give metric a try and see if this works better for me. And what did I find out? That it works fantastic for me. Not only is it easier for me to manage, but it also has given me the ability to be more accurate easier, if that makes sense. Now, I know some people are going to probably light me up in the comments and probably think that this is ridiculous because I'm deciding to use metric and how un-American that is, which I just think is absolutely silly. I think you would be surprised if you decided to just build one project using nothing but metric measurements, how much easier the process becomes. I'm not saying that everybody needs to do this or should do this. If you're somebody that's considered the idea of switching from imperial to metric, you are the people I would definitely say to give it a try. Because you're probably in the same position that I was in where it starts to get really frustrating when you're trying to figure out all the different measurements or divide something that's a fraction or whatever. Again, I'm not good at math. I graduated high school with Algebra 1-2, which I'm pretty sure isn't even supposed to happen, but it did happen. And so now I wanna talk about the most common conversation that I have when it comes to Imperial and Metric, and that is the, the fact that people have a really, really hard time thinking of what something is in a metric measurement compared to an Imperial measurement. It does not matter. And so the biggest gripe that people have is if you were to say, how many millimeters is in one inch? Well, one inch is equal to 25.4 millimeters. Now, when I have this conversation with most people, the immediate response for those that, you know, definitely have no desire to change the metric are, you see what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. Now it's in a, a decimal form. And so if I was to multiply that by whatever, it's just not gonna add up to be the same. It's not gonna add up to be the same because they're not the same thing. And that's what people fail to understand. Just because something is one inch and you decide to build it in metric, that doesn't mean that you need to take the exact metric equivalent to make it one inch. Just build it in Imperial if you want one inch. If you want it to be in metric, make it 25 millimeters. So hopefully that's an easy way to break that down. I think that's what gets people so wrapped around the axle about the changes. They're like, it just doesn't make sense. Do not relate it to an imperial measurement and then it will be much easier for you to continue on and work. I think the biggest problem that even I still have today is associating the longer lengths. And I'll give you a real world example of the project that I'm currently working on, which is a uh, credenza that I'm building to house a bunch of wine for our dining room. I used Imperial for me to scale that project in my home because in my head I can visually see and understand what five feet or 60 inches would look like in that space. I still fully understand and can visualize the Imperial sizes. I'm still not at that point where I'm able to go, yep, that area right there is about 1500 millimeters right? Or that area right there is about 2,200 millimeters. And that's fine. I'm just using the measurement as a reference. At this point, I know I want it to be roughly this long. So what I did is I was like, okay, I'm going to build this 1,500 millimeters. And from there, I can do all of my measurements, all of my adjustments using that number. And so the sooner that you get out of the mindset of it has to be the exact equivalent to that imperial measurement, 
the easier it will be for you to switch, should you choose to do that. So let me close this out by just being 100% clear. I am not saying that if you use one over the other, you're smarter or you're better or your woodworking is gonna completely change. I'm telling you why I like using Metric and the experience that I have. I would encourage you, if you're somebody like me that had struggled with dealing with all the fractions and everything else, consider trying it out. And like I said, just do a small project and do not bother yourself with what the Imperial equivalents are. It is completely irrelevant. Imperial and metric are two totally different things, but at the same time, they do the same thing. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful and you guys kind of understand a little bit more why I decided to switch over to metric for about 99% of what I do in my shop. I'm really enjoying these five minute Friday segments, everybody. If you guys have anything at all, please do not hesitate to leave those in the comments section below or reach out to me over on Instagram, at Vince Woodworking. You can follow me there. You can actually see what I'm doing in my shop on a daily basis over on Instagram, but please do not hesitate to send me a DM and say, hey, can you do a five minute Friday segment on whatever, whether it's a tool, a topic, does not matter. These videos are really easy for me to do and I really enjoy doing them. So if you have something, comments down below or send me a message over on Instagram. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I've gotta to get to work in the shop. So until next time, get out in your shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.